I welcome you all to another edition of our live Radio Bridge program and the topic today is Development of Northeast in 70 Years, a Retrospect. We have become independent from the British colonial rule for more than 70 years now. Ever since independence, we have seen a sea of change in terms of development in various sectors such as infrastructure, communication, connectivity, education, science and technology, human resource development, skill development, stability and last but not the least, peaceful atmosphere. But the question that arises along with all these developments is, are we really in the right direction? Has all sectors received equal priority? when it comes to these developmental activities? Has it been a people-oriented approach and are the people happy with such activism or development? Are we moving in the right direction? And what more needs to be done or what approach needs to be adopted to ensure that the fruits of development reach every nook and corner and every stakeholder in the region? Now these are some of the questions that we will raise today in this discussion on the topic that I've already mentioned, development of Northeast after 70 years of independence a retrospect and to find answers to all our queries raised we are being joined in our respective AIR stations by a panelist and they are Dr. L. Lalrat Pui who is an associate professor department of economics Mizoram University Aizol we also have from Agartala Satya Brata Chakraborty senior journalist poet and critic we also have from Gantuk Talk Bhim Tatal who is the director primary education HRD department Government of Sikkim, Gantok. And of course, from Itanagar, we have Professor Nani Bhatt, who is the Head of Department Political Science from Rajiv Gandhi University, Doimuk. So, very, very warm welcome to each of our panelists. I really hope you can hear me uh, loud and clear so that we can really initiate this discussion. And well, if you can hear me, this is, I have the first question, of, and I will be throwing open this question to our panelists from ISOL. Very good evening to you. Good evening. Very warm welcome, uh, Dr. L. Lalrat Pui. Thank you. Okay. And you, what would be your first thought uh, when it comes to the developmental activities and their progress in the northeastern region? Uh, would you certainly agree that we are on a faster mode of development now than never before? See, tonight I am here to analyze whether we as the northeasterners are satisfied with the pace of development right. in our region after, you know, 70 years of independence. Mm -hmm. Without any second thought, I would say that, you know, the pace of development has rather been slow. And I would like to mention the first reason why I thought that development is rather slow is because the central government doesn't take the northeastern region seriously. And it is a high time, you know, they take us with an open mind towards its development right. as an integral part of the nation. Uh, now that I've just got your uh, quick opening comments, uh, can I go to our other stations as well? Professor Nani Bhatt, a very good evening to you as well. Yeah, good evening. All right, so you have just heard, uh, you know, our, our panelists from ISOL making the opening comments. What would be your opening comments as far as, you know, our developmental activities uh, that has progressed in the last 70 years in the Northeast? Rather than calling it a uh, developmental activities, I'd like to call it as a developmental perspective. Right. I, as, as a political science student who have been associated with the political teaching for so many years, right, sir, would like to slightly depart from what my friend from Mizoram said. This is because of the fact that in Arunachal Pradesh, if you look at the developmental activities initiated by the government of India or for that matter the government of Arunachal Pradesh, I have an impression that after 1962 or immediately after the independence of a country, now, especially after the present government took over, it gives me an understanding that developmental pace has very much increased okay. to many points. So you, uh, you feel that yeah. now you are in the right track, Itanagar and uh, Arunachal Pradesh is on the path of development. Of course, it's a part of development, but it's difficult to say whether in a right track or in a <laughs> okay. wrong track. It right. a, it's yes. a matter of debate, I would say. Absolutely, rather. and that is what this discussion yeah. is all about. We will discuss and okay. debate a little bit more on this. Sure, I would sure. like you to come in, uh, you know, when our other uh, panelists are also talking, you always, uh, you know, also mention your, uh, your, your comments even in between the other panelists. Now, let me just uh, go to Agartala. It's like traveling from one place to another, though I'm sitting here in Shillong. And uh, Satya Brata Chakravarti, who is a 
senior journalist, poet and critic. Very interesting indeed. You are uh, there in Agartala. I warmly welcome you as well. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Quickly, may I also have your opening comments? So what are your thoughts? Especially, North East is a neglected region mm. for so long uh, after independence. Adequate attention was not given for development of this region from Delhi. So, we have uh, numerous problems. I know there is a range of development in many areas, remarkably many areas. Mm -hmm. But poverty, unemployment could not be solved and uh, there is hardly any effective and pragmatic approach to develop infrastructure mm -hmm. for economy is not there so far. Okay. It is unfortunate and deplorable. Okay, all right. I'll come back to you once again, uh, sir. If, then let me bring in uh, our panelists from ISOL. Ma'am, I think we all agree that so far each of you have uh, painted uh, not a very, very uh, bright scenario when it comes to developmental, yes, yes, yes. Uh, of the entire Northeast, right? So, so in spite of 70 years have rolled uh, by, so where have we faltered, according to you? Where has things gone wrong, you feel? See, uh, from Itanagar, mm -hmm. one of the panelists uh, was highlighting his point. I believe he's a political thinker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. From his perspective, uh -huh. maybe there are some developments. All right. But being an economist, my reason here is that, you know, in our region, we have lacked the population of what we call skill-based population. Mm -hmm. The educational system that we have are all uh, theoretical knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it is a high time that we have a vocational-centric syllabus. Mm -hmm. That is the first uh, point that I would like to mention here tonight. That is human resource development. You know, in the Northeastern region, as a Northeasterner, I believe that we lack skill, be it in terms of entrepreneurials or vocational managerial skills. Right. So the first priority that we should have or any de development policy in North East should focus to is on skill development. Right. But then isn't that being highlighted now? Isn't that also being stressed right now? You know, Skill India Mission, that is, uh, I mean, very forced. Are we really included? I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Why do you say that we are not included? See, there's a, a certain points that I would like to mention here. Yes, ma'am. Just, just hold on factor. to your thoughts, ma'am. Just hold on okay. to that thought okay. because I would like to bring in our panelists from Gang Talk there. So, uh, Bhim Tatal, who's the director of primary education, you are there right now, sir. Good evening. Good evening, I'm here. Yes, yes, it's a pleasure to have you too. So quickly, yes. let me just hear, also hear your opening comments because we have heard the opening comments of the other uh, panelists. So quickly, if I may know, what do you feel, uh, how, how well or how not so well have we progressed when it comes to development of Northeast in the last 70 years? Uh, well, thank you for the question. Uh, talking in terms of Sikkim with the Northeast, mm -hmm. uh, I have some things to mention. The first thing is that Sikkim became a part of India in 1975 only, right. of which uh, we are only 45 years old with India. Mm -hmm. And uh, we became a part of the Northeast in 2008. Mm -hmm. Before, it has been only 11 years that we are in the Northeast. Right. So we have uh, a history of development of Sikkim as Indian state for about 45 years. Right. And in the past 45 years, the de development in Sikkim has been so, I must say, so fast, so rapid, that uh, uh, in the past uh, four decades, we feel like we've entered from the third world to the first world country. What has been the de de uh, place of development? Uh, whatever the other friends from other Northeast states have said, mm. I also agree with them as well. Mm -hmm. but in the case of Sikkim, it is something different right. because uh, although we became a part of India in 75 only, the progress is really fast. I would just like quickly now to bring, um, uh, you know, our panelists from Aizol. Ma'am, you were continuing, you were saying that, you know, skill mission is there, but then uh, is the North East included? Quickly, you wouldn't want to just button? See, we have been... Uh facing a serious unemployment scenario in our region. Mm. I would just like to cite uh, the Census of India 2011. Right. See, in Northeastern region, we in another 15 to 20 years, the population of this region will be dominated by the age group of uh, 19 to 20 and a strong pool base of 35 to 50 years. Okay. So this second population base, uh, the 35 to 50 years range, which is in their 20s and 90s now, they should be inculcated in vocational entrepreneurial mm -hmm. and managerial skills. Mm -hmm. Why so? Because in this way, the Northeastern, we as a North, mm -hmm. uh, Northeasterners, mm -hmm. our dependency on skilled population from other parts of India will be Decline. 
May yeah. I come in? Yes, yes, please do, please do. Uh, uh, there is one more important thing that I would like to make here is mm. that Sikkim has never been under the British control, not even the East India Company personnel uh, is stationed in Sikkim. Uh, prior to 1975, Sikkim was a protectorate of the government of India. Prior to 1950, it, was an inter uh, it had an international identity as an independent nation. So in between 1950 to 75, the development of Sikkim was purely based on the wisdom and vision of the Britain Chogel, right. the king king, who had uh, some visions from the European countries, and that is how they developed the state. Uh, we have our education background as having the first uh, English school in 1906, right. and thereafter modern education in Sikkim starts in the late 50s, mm -hmm. and by now we have become one of the largest education hub in the country, and uh, we have really progressed far uh, in tourism sector, hydropower sector. We are the second largest biodiversity in the world. How much of these development when you are, you know, you're laying out, you know, and it really feels uh, very, very encouraging that, you know, so much of development has happened, you feel, in Sikkim over the years. How much of it you would attribute to the administrative ad or, or the support given by administration or by the people themselves? Because a lot of development also depends on the people, you know, whether they initiate progress in the right direction when it comes comes to developmental activities as well. Yeah, the credit goes in the first place to the people of Sikkim themselves. Right, exactly. The matter being that we have been a peace loving and mm. uh, the past so many years we have not seen any kind of uh, disturbances in the state. If you uh, carefully compare the uh, per capita income, uh, especially in the of the northeast uh, state, Sikkim at this moment has almost uh, the purchasing power parity of Sikkim is uh, almost about 10 lakhs. And of, of these eight states mm. in the north, uh, mm. Sikkim stands at the top with a, with a capacity comparable that, to that of China. <laughs> that and is last really one nice. that it has, I will not name the state. Uh -huh. Uh, it has a uh, capacity of around 2.4 lakh, comparable to that of Cameroon. Wonderful, wonderful. Maybe we can learn a lot from Sikkim. The other states can yes, learn a lot yes. from Sikkim, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. okay. We have more eight states, so seven states here. <laughs> and yes, we can learn from our brother. I guess uh, all the sisters yes. can learn a lot from their brother. Let me just bring in, uh, yeah. can we just bring in uh, uh, our panelists from Agartala once again, Satya Brata Chakravarti, sir? Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, so far, you know, the I mean, it is quite balanced, I suppose, because uh, gang talk is really going uh, well, saying that so much of development has happened, though they have attributed it to the people also. But then uh, you have uh, you have actually uh, not uh, not been too happy when it comes to you know developmental activities that has happened. But then, having said so, what about connectivity? What about communication? Don't you think what we were before? I mean, at least northeast now is well connected. At least from capital to capital, we are well connected with each other. But whenever uh, you think that it is a span of uh, 70 years, mm -hmm. the connectivity should have been more, much more effective. Right. Say, Tripura, which became Union Territory in 1963, mm. and finally got recognition for being a state in January 1972. Mm. This landlocked state, there is hardly any communication so that we can touch the Indian mainstream. Yes. The uh, national highway number 44, uh, it goes through the hilly terrains and during monsoon. The, it becomes disrupted okay. seriously mm. due to heavy landslides. Right. So the uh, connectivity is yet to be made uh, at par with the mainstream India uh, when enormous potential is there in Northeast. Right. Very true. Uh, but we are facing the serious problem of unemployment. Mm -hmm. Hundreds, thousands, and lakhs of job seekers, they are striving hard for their existence. Right. Now, one thing I should point out here, that uh, for the emancipation of economy in Northeast region, as it being a very landlocked area, we should look forward to the vibrant economy of Southeast Asia. Through Bangladesh, mm -hmm. it is very much, we are fortunate, uh, we are thankful to the generosity of Dhaka. They have offered the opportunity mm. 
to utilize Chittagong port, okay. which is uh, 70 km away from Tripura's southernmost point, the and the, the distance can be easily uh, negotiated. All right, yes, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you are you are charts. coming in. Yes, yeah. A, a quick a quick rebuttal from you. Yes, what were you saying? India is on the track to act ace policy. Yes. I believe that the government should act notice first okay. instead of act as. All right, all right. So, so that is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would just like to bring in from Itanagar because the professor right. Nani Bhat is still there. Because yeah. you, you, you may, are may very. I come in, ma'am. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I would like to thank our panel, our co-panelists. for present, having presented their perspective on the developmental issues in northeast india hmm. but having said this i'd like to request all the panelists let us agree to disagree let us try to understand and give our own perspective now my understanding and my question is that if sikkim which became a part of india in 1975 could overtake rest of the states in northeast region hmm. and if sikkim uh, yeah, has become a part of any uh, city also <laughs> okay uh, the, <laughs> sikkim is very very happy with its uh, state of, course, of affairs must be happy because i've been there i know the developmental trajectory is day mm-hmm. now coming back why can't we now i also agree with my co panelists from mizoram also from tripura which says that unemployment is a problem and in order to solve un- problems of unemployment mm. we have to have skill development but my entrepreneurship is, is also that, being given a lot of thrust right okay, that's what i said yes yeah. i wanted to say huh. in arunachal pradesh for example hmm. we also have not only skill development mission but also we have directorate of skill development here okay full pledge directorate do we have here hmm. but the problem is that we cannot just depend on the government of india right. we cannot just depend exactly. on the incentives uh-huh. of the government of india right. or the agencies of the government of india mm. we have to change the mindset nobody from arunachal pradesh or that matter from assam or any other state many states hmm. unlike maybe mizoram wanted to take up this uh, other the activity tailoring activities right or even kovla so in that situation what does the government do therefore what my understanding is that yes we would be needing skill development and we cannot just be, be dependent on the intensive incentives of the government right therefore we have to think for the sustainable development hmm. and sustainability will come not only on the activity activities of the government but also reciprocity of the people, people of the themselves. respective point state. very well taken and i would just like to quickly bring oh, in um, lalrak pui once again because we or you might just uh, differ a little bit quickly See, your point i yeah. agree with him partly because the need of the r state intervention But and isn't the state also inter- inter- intervening? Because a lot, you know, it's there before us, and we just need to go and grab it. I mean, you you cannot expect the government to do everything. So we, the people, no, the thing should, is, yeah. there is a lack of connection between those budding entrepreneurs hmm. and the government. Okay. There must okay. be something, any kind of intermediaries or any kind of connection that can bridge the gap between the budding entrepreneurs okay. and the state government. Okay, I think that's a valid point as well. Uh, that gap that is there, that needs to be. Yes, right. Filled up. Yes. Uh, okay. I have a mm. statement to make, which is comparative rather. Mm. Uh, when we talk of what government does and how it does, in terms of India as a whole, uh, one of our friends was talking about uh, the active policy, which earlier was a lookist policy. When the government changed, it became active policy. Yeah. and uh, in terms of this change in the uh, in the way they have been looking into it hmm. has not made much of difference when it comes to the north is better okay. however in terms of speaking what i see is that hmm. in the last 45 years the government what the first government did was carried forward by the next government and th- there has been uh, an uninterrupted continuity of the development that has been made and we are at a state today that we need no much development now we are on the way to make things better and it is mad- Management, that is what we need because we have 100% electrification. Hmm. We are the first organic state not in the country only. Right, you have been one. awarded recently yeah. once again. Yes. yes, yes, yes. And our recent proposal of the government is that it aims at providing a regular and guaranteed income to its citizens mm-hmm. without any restriction. With thousand, and this is planned for sure. But if achieved, the scheme would go a long way in alleviating poverty. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I, I, I would just like to bring in another point here, and that is education. I think this is one important. sector that really needs to be filled up a little bit more uh, why i say that is that because shillong the capital of meghalaya is known to be an educational hub of the northeast we find a lot of student community that's coming from other northeastern states to yes. study here in shillong now that is encouraging that is great but that also shows the other side that means 
do we have the required educational facility or don't we have the required educational facility in the other states? Otherwise, why do we have so many students from across to have to come, live in hostels, live in PGs, and, uh, you know, spend a lot of their resources here? So when it comes to education, do you think every state, apart from Assam, other states of the Northeast, has got that required, uh, you know, thrust when it comes to education? I would just bring in uh, a Beam Tatal here from uh, Gang Talk, uh, quickly from you, because uh, you have painted a good picture of uh, Gang Talk. What do you have to say about this? Because we do have uh, students from Sikkim as well, coming to Meghalaya, to Shillong as well for studying. Let me first inform you all that Sikkim has achieved 100% literacy. The other thing is that, uh, as you were talking about the fact that uh, there are students coming to uh, Shillong, similarly... Yeah, that's, in, that's an example uh, I've given, yes. Yeah. In, in Gangtok, if you, if you happen to come to Gangtok, you will see there are so many students in our university and the you know, technical and the medical institutes in Sikkim who are from the northeast. I mean, the rest of the part of the northeast. But they're also going out, yeah. sir. They're going yeah. out of the, of the northeast out of the region to do to, to take up that, higher education. That is important to you know to analyze here. The fact is that Sikkim being a state with 7,900 square kilometer land only hmm. has almost developed to 14 universities. Uh, we uh, having a population of a little over six and five lakhs only have a student percent is about 35 percent. We have a, we have the rate of uh, development in the sector of education is very fast. Okay. And uh, in the northeast, Mizoram is one, and the Sik and Sikkim is other. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'll just take a quick view from uh, Mr. Sathya uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, okay, ma'am, uh, just come in and I'll bring in uh, Sathya Brata Chakravarti I think also. it's a high time we, uh, as a panel speaker, we should not focus on the percentage-wise. Mm -hmm. It's not about having 100% literacy. Mm -hmm. It's about reducing the college and school drops out, mm -hmm. imparting skill-based education, not only theoretical knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mizoram is the highest, maybe in census by 2000, census, uh, sorry, census 2011, we were the second right. among the states. Hmm. After Canada. With UTs, hmm. we are the third. But does that really reflect hmm. the educational level of the Mizos? Okay. So what exactly is education? So, so to me, it is so, so where skill are we going development. Satya Brata Chakrabarti, please come in now yeah. and tell us. Tell us, uh, because this is very important, because we are talking about the youth again and again. And when, it, when we talk about the youth, means education. So much of, uh, you know migration happening, so much of uh, them going outside that region as well for higher education. Surely something is wrong uh, somewhere. The educational scenario mm. in our state is uh, uh, we are optimistic. We are optimistic in the sense that infra educational infrastructure has been developed remarkably mm. in uh, so many years. And uh, there is two medical colleges, three universities, uh, um, NIT, National Institute of Technology, Colleges of Fishery, Nursing, and uh, um, uh, General Degree Colleges. Yes, yeah, sir, but, but why, there so many, so, why are so many students from the region still going out then, sir? That hmm. means uh, it, is, it is not enough? We for, need to have more. For higher education, hmm. for higher education, they prefer to go out to Bangalore or Calcutta, Delhi, or elsewhere in the country uh, for better education, quality education. So that does that there mean that we need to have quality education and those establishments here in the region? No, they are doing. But quality has no limit. So if somebody wants to get quality education, higher education, mm, mm. this is the age of sophistication. So we cannot bar it. We cannot prevent it. But there are a lot of people there, lot of students, yours, they are satisfied with the local educational system and many are going out uh, for okay. better, higher education. Okay. Uh, Professor Nani, a quick a quick word yes, in this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Please give it to me to speak on this, this matter. Hmm. Now, let us go back to the history of education in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. Now, initially, after the independence of, of our country, Pandit hmm. Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, wanted that there should be a kind of policy which would be there without unnecessarily interfering in the tribal code of conduct. But what he did was, what the government of India then did was to bring in Hindu missionaries in order to impart education in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. And we must also remember the fact that Christian missionaries were not allowed to come in inside the inner line 
of uh, in the Pronte area of Arunachal today, mm -hmm. and there are various reasons for that. I don't want to get into that. Right. And basically because of this, initially the government of Arunachal today also brought in the NCRT curricula, which had helped the people of Arunachal today to a great extent. And I must tell you, ma'am, that the people of Arunachal today, the students of Arunachal today, are well conversant with English, Hindi, Assamese and also maybe some other languages. Now coming back to the educational scenario in Arunachal Pradesh, I would not say it is a good, also bad, but the government of Arunachal Pradesh is trying to do hard in order to bring about quality education in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay. But I'm not happy with the quality of education in Arunachal Pradesh, what one of our co-panelists said. This is because we have schools in Arunachal without teachers. We have okay. schools in Arunachal Pradesh. We have teachers but no students. Mm -hmm. And we have more teachers than students in some of the schools in Arunachal Pradesh. All right. Therefore, what I mean... Is it in public school? Just a minute, just a minute. Just let me complete, ma'am. Now, okay. these two schemes, schemes we have, SSA and Rastya Madhyamik Siksha Avian. And this particularly SSA, Sarva Siksha Avian, mm. did not do any well for the people of Arunachal Pradesh, I should say. Okay. This is because money were pumped in, it had gone to the corrupt politicians and also the educators hmm. and also the education, uh, uh, whoever, whoever were involved in this education sector hmm. and actually did not penetrate into the actual beneficiaries. I'm glad now, that, yeah, the I'm, point. I'm very glad yes, that you're bringing out this now. point. Yes, just, we, just a minute, ma'am. Yes, yes. Now, in order to have a solution to this, I am told that near about five lakhs people from notice in there goes out for educa higher education to Delhi, Bangalore, whatever. Now, in order to address this problem, we have to have, what we have to have, we have to have political will, number one. Mm. Number two, we should have a governance, mm. better governance. And third and most important is we have to have law and order. There should not be any law and order problem in the entire state of Arunachal, in, in the state Arunachal or, the, or any of the states of in the North East India. Right. These are done, right. then we would hope to bring in quality education. Absolutely. I can't agree with you more and I'm so glad that you've brought these points directly and it has been heard. I'm sure the other panelists also will agree because no development will succeed unless we have the atmosphere created in the region for development and a peaceful atmosphere. So do we have that? Uh, Dr. Lalreth Pui once again. How is the atmosphere? Are we, uh, is the atmosphere right towards development to bring in development? Are we friendly? Are we, you know, uh, infrastructure Structure friendly? Are we happy? Do we have that si uh, situation yes. here? I am very proud uh, to say that Mizoram is an example when it comes to education. Hmm. What about the other northeastern states as well? The then? other northeastern states, see, the national literacy rate is 74%. Hmm. Hmm. Just Mizoram and Sikkim are above the national average. Right. So the other states, I think they really have to try hard. Hmm. Uh, as I have said, I am sticking to my point on skill development. Okay, okay, because it's you are really stressing on this. theoretical teaching. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, and okay. here I would like to add one point, since uh, time is a limiting factor. Right, here. right. The first a key point for development of North East is rural road connectivity. Right. I would like to this add is that. a very good rural point. Rural road yes. connectivity. Mm. Yes, this is a very good point because, you know, we may, may be having a lot of national highways, but I think our rural connectivity is deplorable in many of the things, um, <laughs> villages, we don't have any roads. People are yes. still walking. They are still, you know, using other yeah, means. Because of reach. lack of transportation, yes. there is a huge yes. loss yes. on our agriculture right. sector. Right. So that should be the thrust to, uh, to yes. really, really improve rural connectivity. All right. So what about a peace, a peaceful atmosphere? Do you think that we, uh, uh, I just bring in Satyabrata Chakravarti once again. How is the scenario now? Are we uh, more stable now when it comes to Northeast and we are therefore, the atmosphere is right to bring in investment yeah. and development? Yeah. Yeah, we are optimistic about the situation mm. now. Because that in is the a North primary East. requisite, I think. Peace is uh, everywhere, I think. In uh, some areas, there are some problems. Uh, I think uh, the problems will be solved and people will be wise right. to select their own ways for development. Unless peace is there, hmm. friendship is there, goodwill is there, it is not possible to develop any particular area or the entire region. And I think each of the northeastern states should also play a role together because we are such a small region. I think we can really come together, use our 
our strengths uh, to build up each other as well. Well, when we talk about this particular factor, mm. we can see at a mm. level that uh, the way the people of uh, the, the rest of the, uh, the northeast in the in the mainland of the country develop acknowledgement of the people of the northeast and the uh, achievement and development of the northeastern states. The way they have been acknowledging now has been uh, quite worth appreciation. Okay. So it shows that uh, it is not uh, that bad as we as it was. Yes, that. I mean we now may that, we uh, may be yeah. moving slowly, but I think we are. Yeah, Surely yeah, moving in the right direction. Right direction, yeah. and we're moving. It's slow but sure. It's gradual. But and but the, the good the type now, yeah. Huh. What we need to do is that all the states of the north, including small brother of brother Sikkim, <laughs> yeah, it is really needed that we come to a close network. Uh, yeah, the north states themselves first need to have you know one single vision together. Hmm. Okay. So that uh, so that we, we can go ahead. Uh. Absolutely. So closing comments from each one of you. I give uh, 20 seconds quickly your closing comments before we wrap up this discussion. I, I would say uh, talk about a developmental agenda in Northeast India, particularly mm. Arunachal Pradesh. If we could uh, be in the position to understand what Pandit Nehru has said initially, framing the tribal policy of Northeast India or tribals in India, what he said is very very important for us to understand. She said we should not judge the result by statistics or by the amount of money spent, okay. but by the quality of character that is evolved. Absolutely. And Wonderful. it is the agenda hmm. of any government, hmm. I think development would come in a bigger way in Northeast India. Fine. Madam, your last closing comments, another 20 seconds. Say for the development of Northeastern state, ILP in a line regulation and the RAP, restricted area permitted, mm. must be revoked on a mm -hmm. permanent basis. Okay. Because these regulations uh, contradict only yes, only the barriers. grand vision of opening oh. up through the Act Ace policy. Okay. Quickly, quickly, I come to Satyabrata. Quickly. Center should ensure mm. liberal flow of finance okay. for building up infrastructure in the backward Northeast. Absolutely. So on that note, I really, really have. Uh, you know, a, a completely exhausted time. I would like to thank each of our panelists from Aizol, Agartala, Gangtok and Itanagar for having such a vibrant discussion today on the topic that we just had, development of Northeast in the 70 years, a retrospect. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, thank thank for you. coming thank to you. the Hope studios. To see you again. Yes, yeah. yes. So, dear listeners, you were just listening to a discussion on a live radio bridge program on the topic development of Northeast in 70 years, a retrospect. And, of course, this program has been produced by Jay Gangte, engineers on duty, Sushis Chaudhary, uh, Rahul Mo Maurya and uh, Hobin. And your anchor is Dr. Moshmi De Chakraborty. This is a presentation of the Northeastern Service of All India Radio. Until next time, goodbye and good night.